All Aboriginal boys have this desire to, you know, to play AFL footy, but you know, with the draft system now, you know, none of the boys know which AFL club that they're going to go to. So you know, for a lot of our boys that have really, really strong connection to, the, to their family and, and where they come from, when we're moving them from one side of the country to the other, um, it does become a massive, massive challenge for them. Selection number one, Collingwood. Player registration 4668, Joshua Fraser, Murray Bush Rangers. On draft day, it was just, yeah, just sat back in the lounge with the family and every time Fremantle or, or West Coast had a pick, I'd be in the lounge watching the TV and then as soon as their pick was done, they didn't call my name. I sort of got up, walked out of the room and didn't really worry about it until their next pick because obviously I wanted to stay in Perth. As soon as Collingwood said my name, I just couldn't get it through my head that it wasn't in Perth. It's one of those things, I guess, when you, when you have a feel about a player, that you want to pursue it. And uh, he came over, and I, I think it showed an enormous amount of courage. There's Davis, number 40. Playing that first game, you know, it was pretty surreal, and I think, from memory, I think I caught the train in with mum and dad that game. You know, catching public transport as a Collingwood player, you know, I, got, I definitely got a ride in after that straight away. And I just, I just remember the, the tempo just being, you know, tenfold from, from you know, the pre-season games and that, where, you know, I wasn't accustomed to it and people can try and get you ready for it all they want, but unless, until you get out there and you actually experience it first hand, you know, you, you don't really realise how, you know, how big of an impact it has on you. Maybe he could have done a little better, the kick was into the pocket, Leon Davis! Yeah, I guess he was just, he was silky smooth and, and mercurial, so, you know, he'd the ball would be on the ground and he'd you know, scoop it up with one hand and then run his 10 metres and he'd either be you know, kicking a goal or, or hitting someone laced out. So it's just, I guess, just that smooth way he moved around the ground and, and all that sort of stuff. That's probably the one thing that, that stood out. He was doing a lot of cameo stuff, yeah, he, because he's called him Magic. So, um, yeah, he did some unbelievable things as you probably see in highlights. You know, you see this little quiet kid come out and just doing this freakish, freakish stuff and it was quite amazing to watch. He just had this real feel for the, for the ball. He would make the ball his. It was almost like an extension of his arms. He'd bounce it through his legs. He could kick you know, around his body and do all sorts of special things. Davis, he snaps and he goes! He's kicked the goal! As the years went on, within about two years, I was doing a little bit more of the VFL, and that's where I had him when he was going up and down a little bit. I remember Mick saying that we need to teach him a little bit more about not paddling the ball and get a little bit stronger. His endurance wasn't as good as what we would have liked. Yeah, a bit up and down. I don't, I don't yeah, I think, I think early on I, I, I took a lot for granted and, and sort of just went to games hoping it would happen rather than putting the work in to make it happen. And that sort of showed in my, in my form and that, which was up and down, got dropped a lot, in for a couple of games, out for a couple of games. You know, as I got a bit older and a bit more mature, it was, yeah, look, just, just putting the work in and getting in what, you know, what you get out. Moving away, I felt it very hard. Went off, the, went off the tracks a little bit with my footy and that and didn't really work as hard as I should have, but you know, getting back on track and that was the times when I came back home and was able to spend a lot of time out bush and instead of being out, you know, out and about with the boys and partying up and all that stuff, I, you know, as I got a bit more mature, I chose to spend it out in the bush with my old man, you know what I mean, and learn cultural ways and, and be more, more culturally stronger. In particular, probably the last three years, um, AFL clubs are starting to understand and appreciate those cultural differences that Aboriginal boys bring to, to their clubs and starting to understand the connection that these boys have to their own family and extended families, um, but also country. And what I've referred to by country, um, you know, their connection to where they're actually from. Mick was interesting, he taught me a fair bit about how to deal with guys from different backgrounds where he didn't get away from the givens but a little bit of leniency here and there with certain things. If he, if he felt like they were not doing it from a deliberate point of view, he was really understanding and supportive of them and I think they felt that and they appreciated that. A lot of elders now that, you know, that still don't have no identity of who they are or where they come from. So with myself, like I'm very fortunate that, you know, my father was, wasn't taken away as a kid. You know, he grew up around his parents, he grew up, you know, in the camps and on the missions and stuff like that where 
He remembers all the places he's been. He's remembered all the powerful sacred sites that he's been to. Therefore, he can pass that on to me and my brothers, you know what I mean? So we're always constantly out bush driving around and, and traveling the country and seeing, you know, elders and seeing sacred sites and all that kind of stuff. And it's something that, you know, as a youngster, you didn't re I didn't really, you know, take full advantage of. But then as I got older and older, every time I'd come back from Melbourne, it'd be, Dad, let's go. Come on, boys, let's go. We'll go shoot, we'll go hunting, we'll go, you know, out bush, we'll go and see all these places. We'll go, Dad, can you take me here? And, and it really did, really did, like, you know, make me a lot stronger culturally. Leon Davis keeps it alive. Can he finish? Oh, that was magnificent by Davis. A brilliant goal. I remember watching him, uh, especially against the Kangas, you know, it was unbelievable. Um, up until he saw his last year, and, you know, Brady Rawlings probably one of the best taggers in the competition. Um, Leon was probably the hardest player that he's probably played on, and he, you know, he, he tested that as well. He, he had everything. He had speed. You know, he had great power. His skill was sublime, and you know, was, there was a couple of years there where he was just on top of his game, and you know, no one could touch him. Um, and he was just an absolute entertainer, and but also a very supportive guy, uh, very, very humble, extremely humble, and um, that's one thing I always remember. Good family man. created some separation, bounce it around the corner. Who can play the percentages the best in this last quarter? Collingwood pressing. Building forward Lee Brown. Davis and Dempster. Davis! Well, this would be ironic. He's made a mark on the big stage. Yeah, I remember the goal clearly. You know, it, it basically made the next week happen. Um, and I suppose when he did get dropped, I've, I'm no doubt, I've felt it just as much as him. Probably one of the most difficult things that I've ever done as a coach was to leave him out of the replay. And on reflection, you win by record amount. Wouldn't have made it any difference. And, and yet, to this day, I'm, you, you still feel, you know, disappointed that we didn't play him. I think looking back at it now, it was really disappointing, I think would have been so good for him to play in that game and then you know he didn't get to do it but he certainly deserved it and he was certainly um, a part of it. Oh, oh a lot to Mick, um, he looked after me I suppose at times when a lot of other people didn't didn't really back me in so you know I owe a lot to him and, and, and to be able to play some good footy in the end and, and, and you know reward the, you know, the faith that he showed in me was something that you know I worked pretty hard to do. Um, like I said, a lot of people wouldn't have given me a chance when he did. So, you know what I mean, I owe a hell of a lot to Mick. Very pleased with uh, Leon Davis. I said to Leon at the end of last year, um, really needed to just do something different. Uh, I, I suppose it was a gamble in many respects because sometimes it's, it's still not over by a long shot, but one of the things about the forward pocket, we know he plays it well. He'd be one of the very few players in history to win a All Australian Ford Guernsey and an All Australian back Guernsey and a small Ford and a small back, very, very difficult to do. He just doesn't panic with the football, so that's why I had no hesitation saying to him. I think he thought it was a joke first. I'm going to put you in the back line, and he said, "Well, I never played back there. I don't think he ever crossed the centre line at that stage." You know, Mick, being the great coach he is, he sort of probably knew I needed a challenge at the time to get motivated and, and, and get right stuck back into footy. So he, he sort of gave me the task to play half back and play down the back line, which I nearly fell over when he said it. For how long, Magpies with numbers, Leon Davis, magnificent, Leon, Leon is back. Someone who played in the forward 50 for, what was it, 11, 12 years, and then in 2011 went back to the back line, where I played most of my career. Like this bloke just comes in and really turned himself into probably the best small defender I've ever seen. Um, never lose a one-on-one, -on -one. perfect skills, perfect decision making. And I was like, you know, Leon, you're a little prick. You've just done what I've wanted to do in one year and I've done it for 11. Actually, lucky Leon played forward because I probably wouldn't have played 14 years if he didn't. <laughs> Probably my most enjoyable year at the Pies was when I played down back and, you know, such a close-knit group and by downside with I'd listen to probably had to listen to Shorey all year because he never shut up. Davis is a lovely kick. Left foot going and going as a goal. And Collingwood with a kick. 
you know, I made my own mind up. It was something that culturally played a big part with it, you know what I mean? Like I spent a lot of time away from, you know, my old man and, and my brothers and, and, and my family and that mum as well. So it was something that I'd been away for a very long time and, and you know, it would, have, it would have taken a lot for me to stay. Um, you know, it, it was something that, you know, it was my, t I was ready to leave, you know what I mean? Like I'm glad I left when I did. But to be doing the work I do now is something that I'm very, very passionate about and, and I wouldn't change that for anything. So it's something that, you know, at the time it was a decision I made, it's something that I don't regret. Um, obviously, I did regret it a little bit when the boys ran out and I was watching them play and I wished I was still there, but that's only for like, you know, two hours a weekend. So it was something that, you know, at the time I, I didn't regret at all and you know, I was able to come home and, and be, up, be back home and spend more time with my old man and, you know, my mum and family and that. So something that I was very comfortable doing. Feeds it out, puts the block on. And the little fella, Leon Davis, finishes off. Well, I always found him to be a very compact thinker of the game. He, 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 know, he, he absolutely knows the game. He, I, I think we're going to make a very, very good football coach because he understands people and he understands the game. I think All-Australian playing forward, All-Australian playing back. I'm not too sure how many people have uh, ever sort of received that you know, accolade and stuff like that. So definitely, yeah, definitely underrated. Quite kid from country WA coming into the, the biggest club in the land and um, you know found two mates and Reese Leon and myself are still great mates today. My son, he, he's a father's son now so you know he's eligible for father's son obviously through the games that I've played so hopefully one day you never know you might see um, my boy running around with number one on his back hopefully but we'll see what happens.